Hey guys, welcome back to the Reed Homestead. It's Patrick. Um, it's been a few weeks since my last video. Uh, been a little busy here at the Reed Homestead. So part of my job description in the United States Air Force was search and recovery. It was one of my additional duties for four years. Um, my main MOS was air traffic control operations. So, um, in the wake of Helene, about a week and a half ago, I ran up to Asheville, realizing how bad it was. I brought some supplies, chainsaw, all this stuff, axes. And I went up to Asheville. I made it about an hour, 45 minutes, just east of Asheville. And it was a parking lot. You couldn't get in. So, I did see FEMA trucks, by the way, there. So they are on the ground there, uh, or were. Um, also saw some videos on YouTube from Chimney Rock, uh, which was also flooded. There aren't dead bodies laying everywhere. I don't want to minimize what happened in Western Carolina. Uh, they have lost between one and 200 people out there due to flooding. And, um, and our prayers are with them. Uh, but it's hard to say it's as bad as is really being reported in some quarters. Anyhow, um, we're going to be going back up there in about another week or week and a half or two. You know, once things kind of cool off and we're able to make it into town with some supplies, we'll do a drive here in the neighborhood and I'll run up there and do another drop. I ended up just dropping, um, the supplies that I had off to a local church. So if you're interested in, you know, giving or anything like that, if you can make it, probably aren't gonna be able to make it into these towns, but on the outskirts, you can find a church and just drop some supplies off there. Oftentimes you'll find that the churches are leading the way. Um, which brings me to foraging. Uh, foraging opportunities here in central North Carolina. Um, especially if you live uh, near some forest, near some woods. Um, my last video, I did misidentify uh, chanterelle mushrooms. We used to buy chanterelles all the time, dehydrated chanterelle, chanterelles when we lived in Arlington. Um, so I knew they looked like trumpets. Part of my training in search and re rescue and search and recovery was once a quarter, you know, you go out for a long weekend, spend the, you know, in the field, you do foraging, training and all that stuff. It's been, you know, 30 years, but uh, anyhow, I knew some of the things like, you know, the last video I, I, we showed you, if you're in an emergency situation, like these people in Western Carolina, you don't have access to food or anything like that, no communications. One of the things you can do if you're unsure about a mushroom is you could take it, put it on your skin, wait about 20 minutes, see if your skin turns red at all, take a piece, rub it on your face, wait about 20 minutes, see if it's irritated, Put a little taste on your tongue, the tip of your tongue. Wait about 20 minutes. Does it turn numb? Does it get irritated? And if not, at the end of all that, take a little piece and eat it, okay? Wait about 45 minutes to an hour. Do you get an upset stomach? Are you cramping? If not, then it's probably safe to eat that mushroom, okay? Not something you, you know, you want to be able to uh, verify whether or not, you know, you're eating something that's edible, okay? What I did at, after I, I got three bags, three freezer bags of mushrooms in the last video. So what I did, my wife, my wife said, those look a little too big to be chanterelles. And uh, so I did some research. I ended up freezing two of the bags and then I dehydrated one of them, okay? And that night I did some research. I knew it wasn't a jack-o'-lantern, jack which are uh, poisonous. They kind of resemble a honey mushroom, um, but 
The difference is when you split a jack-o-lantern open, it's that same color on the inside. Okay, so that's the tell-all of a jack-o-lantern. If it's golden on the outside and you split it open, the cap and the stem, and it's the same color inside, don't touch it, okay? Uh, honey mushrooms are white inside, okay? A couple of the websites that I started off on that night, thegardeningdad.com, they'll go through a bunch of commonly growing mushrooms in central North Carolina. And you could do this whatever state that you live in. You know, just Google common mushrooms in whatever state. New York, uh, Minnesota, you know, Michigan, whatever. So just common growing mushrooms in your state and start there. Um, I also went to, let's see, birdwatchinghq.com for some common growing mushrooms in Carolina. Uh, he's got a list of 30 of them. Uh, also will tell you which ones are edible or not. A lot of these sites suggest that you just buy your mushrooms instead of foraging. Um, but the last thing I did was emailed uh, the Department of Agriculture. Oh, I started off the Department of Forestry, um, sent them a bunch of pictures. They, they said it looked like they were um, honey mushrooms to them and they referred me to the Department of Agriculture after about three agents. Um, they said, yeah, it looks like they're honey mushrooms. And they sent me a referral to North Carolina State University. Uh, so Wolfpack. Um, and the dean put me in touch with a foraging expert. I sent her pictures. She said, yeah, those are ringless uh, honey mushrooms. So normal honey mushrooms have a ring going around the stem, you know, a bulbous ring going around, still edible. Um, she sent me a link. I'll share that with you. It's horticulture.ces.ncsu.edu slash mushrooms. Again, that's horticulture.ces.nc su.edu slash mushrooms um, and she she also sent me some links on how to prepare and uh, produce the um, the mushrooms and stuff like that so some of the things that you'll find in Central Carolina uh, that are pretty common uh, around your house especially if you're near woods are first we're going to start off with it's called green shield, green shield lichen, or lichen, or lichen, and it's basically right here. You see that underneath uh, Blue's house. That's a mixture of algae and fungus. It's not poisonous. It's not going to hurt you. Um, sometimes you'll see the deer's licking on that if you see it out in the woods. Uh, another thing is turkey tail, turkey tail mushrooms. So often growing on pine, sometimes on oak. Here's some right here. Okay. Resembles a turkey tail. See the colors there? They're thin. They grow in rows. Kind of clam-like. That's turkey tail, completely edible. Here's some more up here. Uh, here in the corner at the end of the logs. Hang on one sec. Let's see if we can zoom in. Right there. Those are turkey tails. Okay, they are edible. Uh, the Asian people use it for medicine. Let's take you down here. We'll look at a couple more honey mushrooms. Honey mushrooms you'll find growing, if you look at the last video, you'll find growing in bunches around stumps and things like that. So right here, another little helpful tip is 
if you see the wildlife eating these mushrooms, like here you can tell the deer have gotten to them. They clip some of the tops. If the animals are eating them, more than likely you can eat them too. So here's a honey mushroom, honey, a ringless honey mushroom. See the stem? There's no ring going around. If that was just a honey mushroom, that would have a ring around that stem, a bulbous ring around the top of it right here. Doesn't have that. How you know it's not a jack-o'-lantern. See that white flesh inside. Okay, that's a honey mushroom, okay? We have some more over here. Um, in the last video, I also showed you some chicken of the woods growing in our front right here. Here's some more honey mushrooms, completely edible. Okay. Um, chicken of the woods, we had it growing out of the grass where we had some old roots from the uh, trees that we had taken down in the past. Um, one of the things you probably noticed in Carolina uh, are those big, puffy mushrooms growing in your yard. A lot of people don't know what those are. So those are actually called pear-shaped puffballs. And how you know is, let's see, right here. Okay, there's one. How you know is this, they also have a common shape puffball. Let's see, right there. Okay, the pear shape, let me just get that in there. The pear shape puffball is edible. Um, again, this one was found under leaves, so it's got some dirt on it, but it's white, big puffy thing. It's got brown spots, okay? There is no spikes coming off it. The common shaped puffball will have spikes. Uh, so that's how you know that's a pear shaped puffball. Completely edible. We have some huge ones growing uh, in the front yard. Chicken of the woods. Um, grows in layers could be anywhere from uh, like beige to uh, golden in color they grow in they grow in layers too it's called chicken of the woods because it's uh, pretty chewy so as you get out uh, on the outside of the mushroom itself the outside of the mushroom, it's pretty uh, pretty tender. So chicken of the woods kind of grows like this, okay? So you'll see it growing in these layers like so, okay? Usually on the top of uh, some trees, uh, dead trees or whatever, that's called chicken of the woods. It can be off-white to golden in color. Um, again, if you have any questions, contact the Department of Forestry. Um, what else? So the gardeningdad.com, and I'll leave these in the um, description, these links. Um, he goes over a, a mushroom called the Destroying Angel which is all white. It's the deadliest mushroom on the planet. So when it comes to the fungus kingdom, white. You gotta be aware of white. Unlike those button mushrooms that you buy at the store, white can be very dangerous in nature, okay? Uh, the red mushrooms, as long as they don't have spots on them, uh, those mushrooms that you see, they're red, they're like yay big. Those are called beefsteak mushrooms, they're edible. Again, referred to North Carolina Department of Forestry, 
Department of Agriculture, and you can also contact the local college, and they'll help you out free of charge. Um, let's get into some do-it-yourself composting uh, that you can do without using hay. Oftentimes, hay uh, has grazon, is treated by grazon, which is an herbicide. Last year, I bought some hay from one of the box stores and used it in the garden, and um, it really stunted the growth of the plants. I noticed after I started using it and watering those plants in, plants kind of shriveled up, turning yellowish, struggling. That's from Grazon. So you got to be very careful when you're buying manures. You don't know what kind of hay or you know uh, food that that cow is eating. Uh, that that black cow might be eating something that's got graze on and if it does have graze on That chemical stays through the intestines into the manure. You use that on your garden. You're gonna have trouble. So uh, What are so, some more organic ways that we could do composting without using hay and without using manures, okay? Um, what I did it's just got some leaves from the forest. Uh, you'll get some leaf mold in there, which is really good for the soil, and grass clippings or weed clippings. Um, that's why I let the weeds get a little higher in some of these areas. I'm going to use that for composting. Let me t let me. I'll, I'll give you a look.